Hi everyone, Dr. Cham here from Enso Medical. So we are on this five-part series to talk about facial rejuvenation. And in the first part, I gave a broad overview of the four different types of, um, the four different aspects of facial rejuvenation that we need to target in order to be, uh, to do a good, complete job. And the four aspects that we covered uh, before were volume, elasticity, skin quality and texture, as well as pigmentation. And in the next few videos, we are going to go into a little bit more depth about each particular aspect of facial aging. And today, we're going to cover the first aspect, which is volume. Okay, so Moon here is going to help me uh, with uh, demonstrating a little bit about how we lose um, volume in the face. Okay, so as we age, we tend to lose uh, two things. One is bone mass and as well as fat in the face okay so as we age we tend to lose um, bone mass in the in the in the face uh, uh, usually around the uh, brow area the cheeks okay we also tend to lose bone mass uh, in around the eye socket area so that uh, our eyes actually look a little bit more sunken as we age even further we tend to lose uh, fat in our cheeks from the fat pads of the, uh, of the face. Most commonly, even in our early 30s, we tend to lose fat even from the, uh, we start to lose fat from the sides of the face, the fat pads from the sides of the face, and as we age, it moves towards the center of the face. So this generally it gives uh, a, a, a saggy appearance, you start to develop laugh lines, you start to develop jowls, okay? So a good approach to volume replacement uh, has to come with understanding of uh, how we lose uh, volume in the, uh, in the face. So the, the solution for volume replacement is of course fillers. I don't think there's any other uh, treatment that can replace uh, volume like fillers can. So a lot of people have um, uh, misconceptions and are very scared about uh, using fillers because they see pictures of uh, bloated faces from Hollywood uh, looking very unnatural but actually you know, if fillers are done properly and in the right way uh, and done very tastefully, uh, it can look very natural and the people who have had fillers done well probably walk amongst us and we don't even realise that they have already got uh, fillers done. Fillers are used to replace uh, volume in the face and sometimes we, use, we do use fillers to shape certain areas of the face including the cheeks, the nose, the, the chin, as well as a little bit of the jawline. Um, there are some people who will say that uh, we could use fillers to do a facelift and that involves large amounts of uh, filler in, into the face. I personally disagree with that approach because uh, I feel that if you have too much fillers in the face, you're going to end up stretching um, the skin too much and that actually in the longer term is going to give you a very over, uh, overfilled look, very bloated look, looks very unnatural and uh, in the very much longer term, it will cause your skin to actually become more saggy by stretching. So my personal approach to rejuvenation and fillers is actually just to add good amounts of volume to areas where uh, there has been volume loss uh, and also use other modalities such as lasers, ultrasound and skin tightening devices to address the other aspects of aging. Um, so in order to get good and natural results, uh, most patients would have to use a variety of uh, different treatments rather than just depend on just one particular treatment. In this case, we are not going to, we, we prefer not to use just fillers alone to achieve uh, tightening and rejuvenation. Okay, so in this case, if we take a look at uh, Moon, our subject today, you, you, you'll see that she has lost a little bit of fat in her lateral fat pad over here. She's still young, so that's why you don't see a lot of loss of fat in the center part of the cheeks but you can already start to appreciate that she has lost a little bit of fat uh, in the in the lateral fat pads here she has also lost a little bit of um, mass bony mass at the sides of her of her cheeks the cheekbones here and if you look forward okay she has she's starting to lose a little bit of of bo uh, bone mass underneath the eyes and a little bit of fat here so when we inject fillers in, into her this would we, would we just want to correct these problems okay we don't want to do too much basically what I would do is a little bit of filler on the sides of the cheeks here to replace the lost fat in the, the the cheeks this also actually gives her a little bit of a lift small little bit here where the uh, cheekbones are and she's lost a little bit at the cheekbones okay so when doing that we actually give her a little bit of a, a lift 
already and you can actually see improvements in the nasal label folds. Looking forward here, if we give a little bit of volume just in the cheeks here, just underneath the eye area and just give it a little bit of volume, you can see improvements both in the under eye area, it looks less sunken, the dark circles get a little bit better and you also get a little bit of a lift of the nasal label folds and the laugh lines. So a common question that a lot of my patients uh, they love to ask me is, Doc, what is the best brand of um, filler in the market? My answer to that is that um, the best brand of filler is usually the brand that your preferred doctor is most familiar with. I personally, I like to use hyaluronic acid fillers as opposed to more permanent fillers. Uh, that's because hyaluronic acid uh, fillers are dissolvable and they have a good safety profile and they also have the added benefit of giving you hydration over the skin. Um, the technology of hyaluronic acid uh, fillers have improved a lot over the past few years and we have generally hyaluronic acid fillers that can last up to a year and a half uh, right now. My personal brand, uh, preferred brand of uh, fillers is the Juvederm range and these are from the good guys at uh, Elegant. They also produce Botox and uh, they have a very long-standing history of a good safety profile so that's something that I, I really trust. Um, and the other good thing that I really like about this the Juvederm range of products is that um, it integrates with the skin very well so it tends to give you very nice natural results without uh, the lumpiness. And sometimes patients also ask me, oh, uh, Botox and fillers, aren't they, aren't they the same? Or just because they are both things that we inject into the face doesn't mean they are the same. Um, Botox is basically what we call a neuromodulator. It helps to relax muscles. So what it does is to help us relax uh, muscles uh, that cause wrinkles in the face in, 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 for aesthetics. So certain areas like your forehead, when you have forehead lines or over the frown line area where you get frown lines and over the crow's feet area where you have um, wrinkles because of contraction of the, the eye muscles. So Botox helps us with wrinkles in these areas. These are what we call dynamic lines caused by uh, facial animation as well as facial expression. Fillers are very different. Fillers are used for volumizing to add, to add volume to the face in areas where we might be lacking or certain areas like the nose and the chin for example. It helps us to shape uh, the chin a little bit better. It helps us build a good uh, nose bridge. Sometimes over the jaw area we use fillers to um, to give a little bit of volume to the jawline so that we can give you a shape you a better jawline. So there are, main, there are big differences between uh, Botox and fillers and these should not be uh, confused with each other. So we've covered volume uh, today. I hope it answers a lot of your questions and misconceptions. Um, in the next few videos, we are going to talk a little bit more about other aspects of facial rejuvenation and how the treatments that we offer at Enso Medical will help you to achieve the most natural and the most well-rounded rejuvenation results.